Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. But I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this is The Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Wednesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the Militia live on X Spaces for the final segment of each show. Syracuse head south again to take on the Yellow Jackets in some orange football action. We'll give you uh, our always accurate predictions on that. And then a massive um, victory last night. And you can say, yeah. oh, it's just Colgate. But that's I think there's more to it than just, oh, it's Colgate. 24-point uh, uh, deficit overcome in the second half. And really like the last, I don't know, 16 minutes-ish, right? Yeah, something um, like that. Yep. So um, for them, a tale of two halves. The first time this year we're using that one, and it'll be the first of many, I'm sure. So a, uh, a a kind of, you know, very lackluster, subpar, even deja vu-esque first half for Syracuse. Uh, Chris Bell just, I mean, the dude goes off 25 yeah. points and leads the team in scoring, and I believe he led the game in scoring. He did. Yep. And, um, you know, we saw a little Benny. We saw a lot of Malik Brown, who was actually another, you know, he, he didn't score a ton, but he absolutely did what he needed to do again. And, you know, just all in all, uh, a terrific, fun game to watch. And we can talk about if it's Colgate, but we talked, you know, I'm going to let, let's let coach talk real quick. I don't have a montage, but we do just, you know, you, you hear the beginning of the press conference. And I mean, that's really all you need to hear um, I- I- as far as this presser goes. So <coughs> let's hear from coach immediately following the game. Man. I thought our, uh, I thought this game was, uh, we knew it was going to be tough. Colgate is a very good team. They, they, run, they do a great job program wise, but I just thought our guys, our team, just dug down deep and really fought, you know. Uh, and that's what, that's what we, we've been talking about, you know, I, you, know def, you know, defending the ball and, and being tough and everybody doing it together. I thought everybody that came in the game today uh, really gave us a lift. You know, I think our strength is in, you know, our depth. And I'm just uh, proud of these guys, man. They, they, they could have folded, but they didn't. They didn't. Um, and uh, so, you know, it was just one of those things that, uh, you know, they didn't, you know, didn't want to lose. All right, and I think they understand what they need to do. I mean, the uh, the whole Colgate to 29 points in the second half, and uh, and, and it only allowed them to have one three. Uh, that's a big jump from what we've been doing in, in the first couple of games. And uh, you know, they did a really good job in the second half of uh, you know keeping guys in front, contesting, rebounding, and then getting out and running. So I'm just proud of this group. Uh, again, I thought they uh, represented what we talk about. You know. Relentless toughness, grit, playing together. So I'm just proud of them. So there you go. And that was to my point I was going to make, and, and that's why I stopped. I wanted him to go ahead and say it. That's what we talked about the the last game, how gritty um, and and competitive this team is. You know, Colgate does their thing. They come out, they hit eight threes in the first half. I mean, it's like seems like an insurmountable deficit. I think a lot of hands were in the air. We were all like, here we go again, three years in a row. We're going to let this happen mm-hmm. on our own court. We were all in the same boat. And, you know, for me, I, I was just, I wasn't even mad. I was like, well, look, they've just got our number. They got some freaking shooters on that team, and it's hard to defend that. And Syracuse traditionally, past few years, uh, to say the very least, is not that team that's w- good at defending that. But my gosh, man, have you seen that? When was the last time you saw the press work that good for that long? Like, they almost did that the whole second half. Mm-hmm. How many turnovers did they cause in the second half? 14. 14. 
in the second 14 half. 14 out of a total 19, I believe. Yeah. I mean, that is, guys, that's insane. Some of the stuff they were doing at the end of that game defensively was just mind-blowing. I mean, I, I'm not trying to overhype what I saw. It's just they just broke the spirit of Colgate. Yep. They broke them, and you and you watched it just slowly happen. And they just got more and more confused and more and more frustrated. For me, I mean, I think that when Syracuse tries this outside shot, new school type basketball, they struggle. They won this game by playing gritty ass defense and taking the ball to the hole. You know, you're mm-hmm. at 80%. You got to the line 20 times, 16 for 20, 80%. That's their game, dude. That's Judah Mintz's game. We talked about that last time. Enough can't be said about that that type of game that they can play with this group. The determination, the fight. I mean, I don't know. I can't say enough about it. And you can poo poo yeah. it and say it's Colgate all day, Joe. For me, I just don't give a shit. I don't care. Who, no, I don't care. I'm who it not. Is. I'm not going to be the one to poo poo it because again, I mean, the Colgate Raiders have been dominating their conference for last couple of years. Uh, they have older guys. They got graduate seniors and stuff. When you look at our, our team, our oldest guy is Benny Williams coming off a of suspension. Everyone else is their second year. Um, and we got a lot of newcomers, you know, so we're trying to still figure it out. I mean, we're starting two transfers. Um, got another one in, you know, rotation with Kyle Cuff. So, you know, we're still trying to figure it out. And um, Colgate. Again, we talked about it. I mean, a lot of these guys on this team have been starters for multiple years. I mean, if you remember two years ago with Nellie Cummings and you know, with Tucker Richardson, um, they they were pretty solid. And Nellie Cummings, you know, he he transferred to Pittsburgh, um, but they still had pretty much everyone coming back. They just you know kind of brought one guy in, their sixth man, um, and then last year, uh, obviously, still had Richardson and beat us again, and then he uh, graduated. Um, and again, same thing, you know, rinse and repeat. They have four starters come back from last year. And then, you know, Luis Jacques come, comes off the bench as the sixth man, comes right in as a starter, and it looks like a, a solid Colgate team again. I mean, you got to remember, they've been dominating the Patriot League. They, they've gone into uh, the tournament uh, a lot lately. Um, last year, they were 17-1 and one in the Patriot League. They finished 26-9, and nine, and I believe they were a 14 seed. So, um this isn't a team, you know, a mid-major team, especially early on. Like, you know, um, I know you only played a little bit of red uh, as far as this you know, press conference goes, but this is like the mid-major team that you don't want to play early, um, especially when you have a young team and you're still trying to figure it out because this team has got it kind of figured out. They're going to go in their league and they're probably going to dominate it again and go to the tournament. Uh, so this is, is a very scary non-conference game against an experienced Colgate uh, Red Raiders team that um, that has been there before. And they're well well more established as a team in how they play than we are. Uh, so to see that comeback was, you know, amazing. You know, And there was a time there for a minute, you know, especially in the first half. I don't know if you remember in the, the end of the first half when we were down a bunch and, and Judah came up and just he just came behind uh, – Braden Smith, the point guard there for Colgate, and kind of just intentionally followed him, like a frustration foul. Like it just didn't look good in the first half. And yeah, you know, I'm sitting there at halftime, and I'm sitting here like, we're we're we gonna lose to Colgate three years in a row, three years in a row. I mean, I just assumed um, we were. I wasn't even questioning it. No, I mean that's kind of where I was, especially when you see a lead that was at 16 at halftime balloon to 24 in the first couple of minutes, and you're like, ah, really? So yeah, I was there. I was there, um, and, and then they got me. They finished they, it. They finished they it on the foul line in, too with Judah Mintz hitting those clutch free throws. I mean, well, and that's his game, right? Yeah. We've seen it in the last three games, and I think there's more people that got to kind of you know get on board as far as that goes. We can't sit back and just take jumpers that other teams allow us to make. You saw they did it to Quidier Copeland yesterday. He took two open shots. They left them open for a reason, and he took shots. And then uh, you know, uh, Adrian Archie took him out. So, yeah, I mean, we got to go to the hole. We got to do things like that. Um, and, you know, Jude, I mean, kudos to Judah Mintz to keep his cool, come back in the second half. And, you know, I mean, he had that steal at half court and then went down and dunked it on Braden's, you know. And he ends up getting fouled 10 times and he ends up going to the line 14 times and, and making 11 of them. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot to be concerned about, but also 
I mean, that's the second highest comeback in ACC history. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, it's um, it's the and actually the the biggest one's twenty five points. So we missed it by uh, a point. So yeah, I mean that's a big deal to come back and uh, um, you know kudos to those guys too. I mean it was just amazing to watch. Probably ended up drinking probably more beers than I should have last night. Alrighty, I don't <laughs> know if it was that bad. <laughs> I mean it would have just been another repeat of the past two years starting in a hole I mean, no, and losing against Colby. It was Colby. bad early, and I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna, just going to shut it off and go to bed. And then they started coming back, and it got me hyped. So they started going down a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Well, I went out to eat last night, so I had a couple drafts and um, in a sports bar in the South and 100 TVs and Dukes on every single one playing Michigan State. So <laughs> it is what it is. I watched it on my yeah. phone. So, um, shout out to Shore Break, Virginia Beach. It's a badass pizza pub. It's okay. the baddest ass pizza pub. It's like the. It's like. I don't even know what to compare it to. Um, okay, do we want to go to? Uh, do we want to go do some fan feedback for Twitter? I mean, there's a lot of it. There's definitely enough yeah. of it to. Um, to discuss i've peeked at a little bit of it um but not too much Uh, to you know for this team to be able to to do that they you have to believe in each other you gotta you know they they never they never quit man and i think it just says a lot and when i said that these guys I said last well, whatever episode it was, we talked about Syracuse basketball last. They're dogs, man. There's dogs all over this team, and they're they ain't playing. <laughs> no, and it honestly, like to what to, to what Coach Autry said, like it's you know at the end of that that statement was like their their strength is their depth because they have certain they have a certain lineup that's probably better off pressing. They have another lineup that's better off playing man, you know, at half court man, and then zone, right? So you can you can mismatch and go back and forth. I mean, um, as far as you know, fan feedback goes, I know. I mean, I got twenty nine on Facebook, and I mean, I think that we can kind of wrap a lot of them up with a lot of the same things of like, you know, talking about showing a ton of heart. And there's a lot of comments saying, you know, first half was beyond horrible. First half, there was no hustle, no energy, no offense, no defense. Like, but second half, pretty much the exact opposite, no quit, right? Like, and then, you know, there's those, some of those comments. It's like, you know, I mean, talking about Bayheim, Bayheim doesn't make that comeback with the zone. Bayheim wouldn't play the press that long. And, you know, obviously they're comparing, you know, Adrian's. Well, we uh, also saw the press not be that effective either last year. Like, it was just effective. I mean, if it's effective, you play it. And then when it's not and you're getting burned, you have to stop. So, I mean... You also have the they, players they, to do it, too. Yeah, right? and they weren't getting burned. They were, they were Even when they did get it across half court, that was only half the battle for Colgate. I mean... No, because we were trailing them and poking it out, right? Yes. Yeah, the whole time it was like, you know, to be able to do that too. And maybe we got some, maybe we got some, some wiggle room on the whistles, but it all, for the most part, uh, yeah, but for the most part, I think it was, it was, it was a clean press and they were poking that ball and they were all up in their shit. And like I said, you get it across half court, that's great, but that's, you're not in the clear yet, Colgate. So, Right. We've just seen in the past, we've just seen Syracuse just get burned and you can't go tit for tat. So you, you can't stick with the press. I mean, what are you going to do? You have to change it. And look, you could sit here and say, well, look, maybe Red coaches it better or differently or whatever. You can say maybe he's a better motivator. Maybe he's a better this. All of that could be true. But my eyes last year saw Syracuse getting burned. And my eyes last night saw Syracuse just... Something I've not seen. <laughs> Saying I'm, not we're seen. not going to let this happen. Yeah, right? I've like, not I mean, seen that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, you can tell. I mean, they're just they're out there 
playing for themselves, for the team, for the coach. Uh, you know, they they want to make this it's work. You know, and they a, know it's, it's definitely it's a, a different feel and different look. As far yeah, absolutely. as absolutely, as far as the energy, the enthusiasm, it's definitely a different look. And look, you know, what's coach? Seventy? What was he freaking? Seventy four, seventy five? I mean, look, how <laughs> hyped up can a seventy five year old dude get you? I, mean, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. So I don't give a shit what you or anybody else thinks or writes. <laughs> and that's where Beheim's hype was. He saved all that hype for the presser. And ain't another presser ever going to be the same. Here's my here's my Never. here's what I want. This is my Christmas wish list. I want I want Coach Red to coach this team for for 40 minutes or you know at least, right? And then I want him to just go in the locker room and do his thing. And I want Beheim to come out and do the press conference. <laughs> Can we make that happen? Because I am got I gotta tell you, I miss it. It's not the same. If I miss anything, it's that. Um Autry, very Beheim-esque on the sidelines with his mannerisms, by the way. He's just been around him long enough to you know when the ball you did the thing with the arms? Mm, yeah, yeah. Very, very similar. <laughs> and I guess when you when you when you hang around coach that long. You 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 try to will the ball down the court and you try to will the ball in the basket and you you know you do all of these things you try to move people with your hands and uh, coach <laughs> coach Red very very animated just like Coach Beheim he's got a little bit of that in him so um, I thought that was funny uh, it was the first time I really seen him up a lot but it was the first time we always we, it was the first time obviously that you know w- he had to be getting up and in and being a little bit more. Um, you know, not just animated, but aggressive with his coaching. So anyways, uh, let's see. At David Super, our buddy David is back. He's a basketball guy. It was ugly, unwatchable. But if you hung in there and didn't change the channel, it became wildly entertaining. Mm-hmm. I watched to be entertained and that delivered. So if you walk away from that pissed off, oh, it's only Colgate, quote unquote. Go pound sand and watch Big Bang Theory reruns instead. Wow. I got to say. I love that very mm-hmm. much. And, you know, I wish David would participate a little bit more in, in, in football because that's the kind of content he delivers. So, uh, very good. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Jen at Heaven's Angel. Best game. Are you sure? Best game I've, I've been to in a very long time. And I've, I've, I've had season tickets for 20 years. Exciting as hell. Going to need more medics and AEDs in the Dome if they keep playing like that, though. Look, you know, there was a comment made, I think, in the presser about how, well, you know, the, the crowd was, you know, it wasn't like it was a Colgate game. It was like Syracuse-Duke game. And, you know, the crowd was good. It was. And, it, and if you live in Syracuse, you didn't even go to that game because it's just cold because it's only Colgate. You missed it. You missed, yeah. you missed it. There wasn't it. even 20 there. I know. Mm-hmm. You missed it. And yeah. that sucks for you. Cause you I'd have been there. I Especially mean, you know, they beat us the last two damn oh, years, you know? Oh, yeah. And you got to imagine, you know, um, not just that, but to witness, to, you got to be kicking yourself to witness, the, like you said, the second biggest comeback in ACC history. It doesn't matter. You know, the stats don't, don't grade these upon who you're playing, by the way. Right. So, nope. Um, at no Blanchard forty four. In recent years, we wouldn't we would have gotten blown out. We're back to being the cardiac cues that that I grew up with. Bring Maui. Time to see what we're made of. And look, I mean that's a really good point because you know you're gonna start off paying, playing the number seven team in the nation, right? Isn't that Tennessee? Mm, that's what they are currently. Yes, currently seventh in the nation, and you're gonna get tested. Um. You know, I don't expect a win, but I'm going to use my basketball analogy. I just want to see a competitive game. And though I'll be upset either either way within a loss, I want to see what this team can do when they take a game like Colgate. You ha- I learned a lot about this team against Colgate. I'm sure they learned a lot about themselves. And those types of things are what the beginning of the season is all about. 
and going and playing in the Maui Invitational and getting, you know, even if you lose, getting to still play. And what are they getting? They get, they're guaranteed three games, right? So, um, yep. so getting, getting to go there and play three games regardless is, is going to be not just an experience, but a time to um, grow and learn. And I'm not, I don't have expectations going into the Maui Invitational, except for that I don't want to play for the, for the worst loser. Or the best loser, <laughs> however you want to look at it. Yeah, well, I mean, currently Gonzaga's eleventh and Tennessee's seven, and Purdue's two. So, what really what you're guaranteeing is you're, you're going to. I mean, we have two games with basically top ten, top eleven teams in the country. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be challenging. We're going to see where we are. This is going to be a great gauge of where we are, and also. Um, you know, it helps us. It helps the players understand where these where these other teams are and where they need to get to to even have a chance to to compete, right? So, um, definitely looking forward to it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, and this kind of goes to a couple comments on um, on Facebook. The top fan, Steve, which I don't know how accurate this really is, but starting forward, thirty three minutes, twenty five points, zero rebounds. That's not going to work. Guess he's talking about Chris Bell. Center can't get up and down the floor. Man defense needs work. Maybe his own question mark. Glad the press worked. Great comeback win. Practice hard. Um, and then uh, another fan, Jake. Same last name, so I wonder if they're related. Um, Red still hasn't figured out the rotations. Who works together on the floor and who doesn't? That said, I said all preseason. If this team can run press trap like the mid '90s Arkansas Razorbacks, they can be good. And look what happens when they do. So, a couple different observations from the Maleys, whether you're related or not, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, it's going to be a challenge, and there's definitely those things, right? I mean, we got out rebounded by Colgate. You know, um, I think it was 44 to 32. So yeah, 44 to 32, and not great, obviously. Um, they, right. they got, I, I think they got, oh, man, you know, you lose count and you don't get this stuff in a box score. So I, I don't, they had a lot of second chance points. I mean, a lot of those buckets went back in. Yeah. So, you know, especially early, right? Yeah. I mean, I think we need to revise box scores would be my best. That would be nice. For anybody. Sure. Yeah. That but, stuff's I mean, so, obviously- that stuff's so important to tell the tale of the game instead of just percentages and shots made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like Yeah, no, it could definitely help for sure. But you um, know, yeah, McLeod gets 19 minutes with only 3 rebounds. Malik Re- uh, Malik Brown gets 20 minutes with only 3 rebounds. Um Chris Bell He only had no one rebound. Right? Oh, um, I thought he so, had one. Okay. Yeah. You know, our leading rebounder was JJ Starling with 7 and then Justin Justin Taylor with 6. So um you know, that's obviously, you know, a place that, you know, we'd need to see a little bit better. And then shooting 28% from three-point obviously isn't great either. We had some timely ones by Justin Taylor and, and Chris Bell. But uh, other than that, it's kind of tough when the rest of the team pretty much goes, what, one for 14. So definitely things we got to work on. But the grit, the hustle, determination, you know, just playing like that, I mean – that was the biggest thing for me. You know, I just, I just don't see a situation where, um, like, I don't, I, I don't know. There's a lot of comments I saw, especially on Twitter, where they're like, they don't know if last year with Bayheim they make this comeback. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, val- it's a valid point, but yep. like I said, there's definitely a different field to this team, but there's also different players. And we're a year older, and we're a year better. Yeah, but and Chris I have Bell to, did some things that I, I, you know drive to the hoop and finishing yeah. it was better too, right? And I think that there's no doubt that Coach Autry is more relatable to these kids than Coach Beheim. You know what I mean? That's not a surprise yeah. to anybody, right? So yeah. I think yeah, I think that we're seeing some of that, and to and to the point, I mean. I don't know if we come back in that game. I, I I don't. I totally I totally would agree with that at the very least. Agree. So yeah. Uh, at Oil Cuse, I can't believe we freaking won that game. 
I was thinking about who was going to be our next basketball coach when we were down 24. Uh, the defensive <laughs> in, intensity in the second half was great to see. Great win. Um, at Keller0103, our buddy Zach here on the Twitter. Energy needs to be high the whole game, not just when we're down big. Uh, need more out of McLeod. He is... He is. Uh, he was a liability on the floor tonight. Our guards cannot lead us in rebounding. Nonetheless, great test, great W versus a well-coached team on Maui. Yeah, they are well-coached, right? And you mentioned them being able to retain players, and they got some, some, some five-year guys and things like that. Obviously, yep. we we don't. We have freshmen and in, in sophomores, right? It, 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 what's McLeod? McLeod was. A, uh, he might be a junior though, huh? He might be, but I think that's it like for the most school wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think we're freshmen and sophomores for the most part, and it's a young team, and we see some of the immaturity in it. And I'm, I mean, by that I mean play, not attitude. But that stuff, I think, looking at this game, my hope is is that. For the first time in a few years, we're going to get to see the evolution of a basketball team. That's my hope. Um, that gives me hope. If they lose this game, obviously I'm not saying that. But for them to be able to do that, you see what they've got. You see the talent that they've got. You see the the the, the grit that they've got. And you got to hope that we're going to watch the evolution of, of a team this year and just to get better and not just to just be f- like I don't want to say flat but I mean let's be honest we plateaued early last year yeah you know what I mean so yeah I, I, I think this year we're, we're, I see what you're saying I think this year we don't you know we see something a little different yeah so anyway um, what else you got on Facebook? Um, no, I mean, so I mean, I got Rob on Facebook. The like, last five minutes made it worth it. Glad I saw it in person. You know, it comes back to what you were saying uh, as far as being there. Nadal, uh, he shared a video of the crowd um, on Facebook and also commented and said that you know the dome wasn't full, but let me tell you, everyone in there was raucous when we were losing, and then were full on hype mode during the comeback and win. It came My voice on TV. What's that? It came across on TV, for sure. No, it def- definitely did. Um, my voice is absolutely gone. We have the talent to do well if we can put it together this year. I know I'm being optimistic, but I'm tired of not making the tournament. Yeah, what are we on? Two years? One year. Two years? Mm, well, we haven't made it the last two years yet. Right, so. two years. So. Uh, at Mr. Mike Winch. Efforts, that's the key. Really hope Red shows that first 25 to 30 minutes of lollygagging and malaise, then stops the tape and discusses how bad it was, then turns it back on and shows them the high energy effort and the final 10 to 15 um, and stresses that that is what a team needs to be about. So I I think um, there's no chance at all that they don't get that. So... No, well, yeah, no. I mean, because it's obvious, right? I mean, the proof was there. You could do it. It's just where was it in the first half, right? Yeah. Um, You have to be able to do it for a full game. Um, You're not going to be able to give better teams, you know, that head start like that. So, um, obviously, uh, I think that it was kind of a – the the crazy thing about this game is is that it's not like – not only did you gain confidence because you actually proved to yourself as a team that you could do something that's very hard to do, but at the same time, there was also, you know, a big, huge learning opportunity as far as, okay, you guys thought you guys were better than what you were. You came in here and look what they did to you in the first half. And then look what you did the second half, right? Like to, to the point um, of that comment, like there was a lot that was learned. There was lessons learned. And there was also confidence gained because, um, you know, a lot of times lessons are learned in some losses, right? You know, you go I mean, through hard, yeah. tough do, do you, fight. Do you learn them or do you just experience them sometimes? That's well, the difference. Well, you experience it and then obviously you work to get better, right? But you learn what your weaknesses are so that you can get better because you were that close to winning a game, right? So it's like a learning kind of experience. Um, 
And then you get the games where you win a game you shouldn't, and then you gain that confidence as a team. It's very rare in a game that you get both. So hopefully they're <laughs> because of this, um, they can give them the confidence and the learning experiences to move forward and possibly, you know, give themselves a chance to get one of these first two games in the Maui Invitational. Because if we lose the first two, we'll probably be playing Chaminade for last place. And then, okay, great. We just get, uh, what, a D2 game where we win and it doesn't help our, our resume. So, in my opinion, going to Maui, um, I want to win one of the first two. And it's going to be tough. Yeah, but. well, don't we all? Um, I got one more, and we are, we are going to move on to football because we're half hour yep. into basketball. We got to try to we got to share time, folks. Okay. At Crimson Fury 006, what a Bills Oilers they pulled to avoid getting embarrassed by a toothpaste school for the third year in a row. Yeah, that was uh, that was a impressive. What was that? What was it forty four nothing or something like that? Bills come back to win that game. Back in the day, no, I don't know if it was that big, but it was what, pretty was big. It, it was it was it was pretty big though. I think yeah, it, was it was pretty still one of the biggest comebacks in NFL history. Right, if I remember right, you'll get me the stats on that. All right, let's move on to football, shall we? Joe, shall we stop the show for you to pee with your little man bladder, or do you, are you good? Uh, yeah, I gotta stop. Do you really? Okay. Yep. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. Your dick. <laughs> uh, all right, the all-time series between Syracuse and Virginia Tech sits at a big two and one in favor of the Yellow Jackets. Not a whole lot of history here. Syracuse is on a one-game win streak after taking the W at home in 2020. Tommy DeVito, 13 for 24 for two touchdowns and one interception. Um, Sean Tucker with two touchdowns and 124 yards on the ground on 24 carries Syracuse with the 37 to 20 win, despite Georgia tech rushing for 275 yards on the ground and 52 carries tech alum, Brent Kelly in his first full year after taking over after, um, from Josh Collins and in, in his, his short stint that, um, I think he left after game four, so be from game five on last year. Um, you had Brent Kelly there. They finished five and seven, four and four in the ACC in 2022. There was a brief quarterback tryout um, before Texas A&M transfer uh, was granted the starting spot. And, of course, I forgot his name. So there's that. Hold on. I got it. Give me one second. Yes, King. Heinz King. Haynes King. Haynes King, Texas A&M transfer. He got the starting spot. He's pretty. He's done a pretty good job. I mean, he's a pretty. He's a pretty decent quarterback. Yep. Um, over twenty four hundred yards passing so far this year. Twenty four touchdowns, fourteen interceptions. Uh, he's in his fourth collegiate year. I mean, he's listed as a sophomore. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't get college athletics it's math COVID anymore. And all stuff, I, so. I know. I just don't get. I don't get the math anymore. Um, look. You know, he is 30th in the nation in passing yards so far this year. All right? Which is pretty damn good. He's averaging 245 yards a game. Uh, his top target, a talented freshman, 5'1", Eric Singleton Jr. He's got 580 yards on the year so far. Uh, the Yellow Jackets offense, um, they've gotten better and better throughout the year with little help um, from their running game. They're ranked 22nd in the Russian attack. Um, and their total uh, averaging... They're they're average they're they're excuse me, their total offense sits at um, in the top twenty five. I think it's like twenty third in the nation. Um, so really good. Their their Russian attacks twenty second, and um, I believe when I say twenty third, I think they're twenty fourth total in, in offense um, for the year. So a, a high powered offense against our pretty decent defense, and um, that, I kind of think that's where the matchup's going to be. I didn't do a. I didn't look a ton into. I didn't look a ton into their defense, but as Joe gets started here, I can, um, I can look some stuff up. But I was, well, I was focused on that because, although I haven't watched many Georgia Tech games, 
except for the UNC game, you know, they've been pretty damn up and down, kind of, for the most part. They were they, they lost a close one, first game of the year against Louisville. Um, they beat South Carolina. Uh, they played Ole they, Miss when – uh, they won against South Carolina State, sorry. Uh, they, they played Ole Miss when Ole Miss was ranked 17th. I think Ole Miss is ranked ninth now. And they lost that game. They got forty-eight to twenty-three. They 15. beat. They they they're fifteenth now. No, they beat. They lost by fifteen. Yeah, forty-eight twenty-three. Or and sorry, they, twenty-five. Sorry. They did lose against Bowling Green. Okay, I'm not real. Uh, by eleven. Yeah, but Bowling Green's six and five right now. So they did beat Miami, and they lost to Boston College, which is crazy. But they did beat North Carolina. And then they beat a Virginia team that was kind of hot at the time too, just a couple right. weeks ago. And then they got they got doubled up by Clemson. So yeah, I lost to Clemson worse than us. Well, we but, got doubled up too, but by more points. It was, right, exactly. So um, kind of an up and down year. They are five and five, uh, just like Syracuse. They're they're you know I feel like their offense is clicking, and you know it's gonna be it's gonna be. A struggle for Syracuse if they can't stay on the field with their offense, it, it could be devastating because this team can put up points and they can move the ball down the field, and that's kind of what worries me when you have kind of the one-dimensional offense that we have. It's all or nothing, and, and, and they can put all their eggs in one basket because they kind of they kind of have a good feeling where all of our eggs are going to be. And um, it's going to be line up and see if you can stop it once again. So, anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was going to kind of say the same thing as you. You know, um, this is kind of like the roster of when you look at their schedule. It's kind of the same thing, right? They're the same. They have, they're five and five, just like us. So this goes back have, to like they have signature wins, though. They have something to hang their hat. They on. do. Are we live? No. No, oh, okay. Um, so they do have signature wins, but they have signature losses as well, right? So um, this kind of goes back to what Tyler was talking about when we had him on last, where, like, you know, what would you – they have the same record as us. Um, but I think they're looked at they're, as a better team. They are because, a better team. I feel like they are a better team. <laughs> we, we can say that, right? But is it because of the teams they beat and didn't beat – I mean, you know, we haven't had some of the losses that they've had, right? Stats, um, though, too. I mean, there's their statistics hold true. Their defense stinks, by the way, for the most part. <laughs> but they let well, a lot of I'm, yards. But up. I'm just saying, they're five and five, but it's like loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, right. loss, two wins, right. loss. Like no consistency. Like what Tyler was saying, right? They didn't get the, you know, you win four, lose five in a row type stuff, right? So. um this team really is just really, really hard to gauge. Uh, so realistically, too, when you look at it, I mean, you want to talk about home field advantage, which, by the way, we play at 8 o'clock. So there we go. We're going to be 8 o'clock um, on ACC Network um, come Saturday. But, you know, they lost at home to Louisville. They lost at home to Bowling Green. They lost at home to Boston College. So, I mean, they've lost three games at home. So, I don't know how much. Yeah, they beat what? But they beat North Carolina at home, right? So, uh, I don't know if home field advantage really helps in this situation. Uh, I think the only real big, big thing that I see, and this is, again, a lot of it comes down to, Yes, you brought up the fact their offense against our defense. Yes, our defense can't allow them to have big plays, and they can't let them just go crazy, right? But our offense is still going to have to score because if this turns into a game where you know our defense is on the field the whole time and our offense isn't doing crap, then eventually Georgia Tech is going to open up the floodgates, and it could be ugly. Um, with that said, um, also, they have a whole week of – game film on like what we did that nobody else knew we were going to do last week against Pitt. So I'm interested to see where we're going to go. I think we're in kind of no man's land and that's probably kind of in our, in our favor when it comes down to it. Right. Because they don't know if Garrett's going to be able to throw this week. Right. We don't, they don't know is Carlos Del Rio Wilson going to be able to come in and kind of give a different kind of look. Are they going to give Dan Valari the same look? Um, they really don't know what to expect because even if we want to go with what we've been doing, like 
with the coach from Georgia Tech has said the last two weeks we've been going run heavy. Um, they don't know what we're going to, you know, kind of branch off and do off of those plays. So um, I think as far as offensive um, strategy anyway, I think that we have the upper hand against Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech, meanwhile, they've been just getting better as the year's gone as the year has gone on with the offense that they have. Um, but with that said, I think the biggest element of this more than anything is that Georgia tech has two more games to get one game to be bowl eligible and their game next week, which is rivalry week is against Georgia. Number one, Georgia. So the main big thing that I'm looking at is, most likely, if Georgia Tech wants to go to a bowl game, they have to beat us this week. And um, that's where... Motivation. That's where the motivation is going to come. And we've seen... And that's the other thing with this team. is We've seen this team where, like, when you look at some of the losses, right? Like, they lose to Bowling Green at home. But then they go to Miami and win when Miami was ranked 17th the next week after a bad letdown at home against the MAC team, Right. And then they're on a high, and they say, okay, you know, we're 3-3, three and three, just beat Miami, a ranked team at Miami. We come home. We got Boston College. They lose to Boston College by 15. And it's like an ultimate low again. And then next week, the next week, okay, we're hosting North Carolina, and then we come back and we win. So um, them losing really doesn't hurt their confidence. They're up and down. They're an inconsistent team, is what I see more than anything. Um, it's because and, it's because their offense has constantly got to be playing catch up because their defense lets they let up a lot of yards. Right. So if we can if we can get an offensive strategy this week, it's a little bit different than last week. But you take what we had last week that worked, sprinkle it in, and then just don't rush the ball. Right. We're not going to do the orange is the new fast, but more. We, we keep control of the time of possession like we did last week. And then you force Georgia Tech to try to have to score fast. You know, that's where mistakes are made. And that's where I see that's where I see the chance of winning this game. Um, but again, a lot of it comes down to how do you start? Who scores first? You know, how many, you know, are you going to make bad plays and spot a team 14 points? That's what we don't need. So, so. Y- Georgia Tech is second. To, they're ranked 129th. Second to last in the country in in um, defense uh, rushing defense, they, yeah. they're they're giving up an average of two hundred twenty four yards a game. Yeah. So I mean, so at the end it's, of the day, it, it's our our strategy is to bodes do what well <laughs> bodes well with what their defense struggles with. Yep. And they have a pretty good <clears throat> offense that plays from behind quite a bit. And they get in early holes. Sound familiar? And it, but it's reverse. Basketball. It's because they're <laughs> no. It's a reverse for them because their 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 defense is actually letting up points, and they're they're probably actually doing a decent job of moving the ball. I mean, their offense is they're a top twenty five offense in the country, and their defense defensive rushing is like one hundred twenty ninth. Their total defense is like one hundred twelve twelve or something like that. It's not great. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, let's There's be honest. Good, they gave up 38 points to Bowling Green and Boston College at home. And yeah, so we held Boston College to 17 at home, right? Yeah. I mean, look, was it even home or was it at Boston College? I don't know. It was at home. Oh, okay. Right. But either way, hold on a second. Yeah, that was a home game. No. Yes. But either way, I mean, Boston <laughs> College doubled up. <laughs> Doubled up what they scored against us against Georgia Tech. So, yeah, I mean, realistically, you'd like to think, you know, if you throw a little, a home few game. Wrink- you throw a few wrinkles into what we did last week and implement it into this week, then I mean, this this definitely could be something that happens. You know, I I I, I think the past couple weeks, you know, just because I haven't really looked into them because I've really been only paying attention to Georgia Tech for the past like four or five weeks, like. They just look like a team that's gotten better, and I watched their offense against North Carolina. And for some reason, North Carolina's defense went to shit after we played them. Um, and We softened you know, them up for everybody. Yeah. So, I don't know, dude. Like, it's just, I, looking at this matchup the last two days, it's kind of given me a little bit more confidence, especially after this past week when I saw 
what they decided to do against Pittsburgh. I mean, I don't see a situation where this night, I mean, you know, negating injuries that, uh, I mean, this, this strategy, I mean, we talked about it, could have worked against Boston College, but worked against Pittsburgh. And I, I kind of see it working against our next two opponents too. So There is um, something in me that switched as I started really thinking about within the last three minutes about how statistically awful this defense is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean, though, right? So, uh, look, I, I, we'll get into it. I, I, now, at the end of, you know, think about this. Just think about this. Forget, forget the four-game losing streak, right? So, just the Boston College on. Winnable game. Wrong game plan. If we implement that game plan, we said, you just reiterated, we implement that game plan, game plan against Boston College, we win. And, and, we, and, then we, and then we beat Pitt. There's a decent shot at beating Georgia Tech. And it's almost a gimme against Wake Forest. You're talking about three of the last four, at least, in my opinion, if we started this against Boston College. It is so hard for me to say Syracuse win and gimme in the same sentence. <laughs> well, at look, this point, I know, I know, <laughs> I, mean, I know, but they're they're not great, dude. Their defense is talk about another defense that's not great. It's theirs. Their offense is good. Their I'm, offense is above average. So, I'm talking about yeah. Wake Forest. Oh yeah, yeah. No, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're all around just not that great. When Tyler said at one point, he's like, "Ah, oh, Syracuse's D line is." The probably the best in uh, the, offense, the, the, offensive the, the, the line, offensive line is probably the worst five. in in D one football and oh yeah he did he did say power five and I was like I don't know Wake Forest is pretty bad it is pretty bad <laughs> so uh, you know it's a race to the bottom there um, and and with that said obviously Syracuse uh, really 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 came together off uh, the offensive line really did a fantastic job last week so um all right look i just posted this because i realized i did not post it joe did you post it to twitter i uh, did our facebook whatever the hell it is uh, i posted I it way late like five minutes ago um yep. hold on one second let me go to it on the computer it was 16 minutes ago um let's get your predictions at no Blanchard 44, 21 to 10 Qs. Georgia Tech can't stop the run and we'll make them pay. If we keep playing like a military academy, we might might win out. I'm in I'm in the <laughs> boat with Noah right now. I am. I mean, I don't know. Look, we all know what's gonna happen. At least we think we do. Stop it. Can you stop it? It's not it's easier said than done. Especially with, with Valari. And then you got Telling you, man. You know, poor man. Poor man's Tim Tebow, bro. That's what he looked like to me. <laughs> I'm just the, saying. He's the wish version of Tim Tebow. Huh? He's the wish version of Tim Tebow. Is that what you're saying? The wish version. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh come on, Joe. The wish version, man. Look it up. My gosh, it's not funny, guys. If I have to explain it to him, you know what I'm saying? No. no uh, I don't get it. Add poor man. Add Cuse Mo Jimbo. It's the same. It's the same analogy. 24 to 13 Qs. Haynes King has been turning the ball over a lot for the Yellow Jackets in recent weeks. I think our defense comes up big in this game. I think that's where the fight's going to be. And I, I think that Haynes King seems to be a talented guy. Yep. And um, I also think we got a lot of talent on defense. But it wasn't until, you know, last week we had an opportunity to really be able to capitalize on some of the turnovers not just capitalize off of the turnovers but just create them or have finish through finish them follow through with finishing interceptions right things like that because yeah. the week before we missed at least four interceptions against um what you what you nuggets uh boston college so anyway um it's a good point and he has turned it over but he still i think his interception to Touchdown to interception ratio is something like twenty. Yeah, twenty four to fourteen. It's, that's mm. pretty. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not great. I mean, it's pretty good. He takes chances, right? So yeah, we go big or go home. That's his philosophy, apparently. 
Pretty much. Um, so, got a couple here. Uh, Nadal hitting up on on uh, you know football too. I kind of feel bad because I hit him up and said we were going to be going live around seven thirty and. But either way, um, whoopsie. Well, we are live around seven thirty. Seven forty eight. Yeah, but we're not live. We're live right now. We're on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So Nadal says Georgia Tech has Clueless. the second worst run defense in all of NCAA. Syracuse twenty five, Georgia Tech seventeen. There's another one, Syracuse twenty one, Tech twenty. Um, Keith, uh, top fan Keith on uh, Facebook. Hughes pulls out another win, twenty seven seventeen. I think Valari throws a touchdown this week and runs for another. So how many, how many do you I have mean, on Twitter? Because I, I got like a quick seven, eight real quick on Facebook. I only got a couple. At Q's Waterboy 2, Q's 24, Georgia Tech 20. The three-headed monster of Schrader, Allen, Valari run wild with a few pass trick plays sprinkled in. Tech turns it over a bit, which feeds right into the mob's playbook. Now, like I said, I think they can. And I think part of that success against Pitt was the fact that Syracuse was able to be, stay on the field. The offense was able to stay on the field a little bit longer than normal and, you know, showboat. And so if we can do all, if we can play the game we played last week, I feel like this could be a juggernaut for Georgia Tech. The question is, can we do it? They have a defense that does not look like it would match up well against that type of game plan. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not, but like I said before, their last game is Georgia. They're five and five, so I think in their heart of hearts, they know if they want a bowl game, this is where they it have is. To so get they're, it. we're gonna get we're gonna get everything out of them, right? And yeah, so I just hope you know the bet. Like I told you before, like the are best you, thing you, is is that you're saying you don't think they can beat Georgia. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Georgia Tech? Yeah, Georgia Tech's not beating Georgia. No, <laughs> I mean, come on, let's be honest, dude. I just want you on and, the record, just in case they do. No, yeah, well, <laughs> going <laughs> going off of uh, you know another comment, Jason. He's like, I'd like to, I'd like them to open it up a little bit more. Schrader is a football player, so he can certainly catch and run, but I'd like to see a bit more passing out of the RPO of Valari. He was a quarterback out of high school, recruited by Michigan for a reason. Ten to fifteen pass attempts to keep the Tech D honest. I think it could go either way, but both teams are desperate. Syracuse twenty four, Georgia Tech twenty. There's some good points there, and I think we saw a little bit about that. Like, we saw a little bit of that with Valari. Um, obviously, he hasn't thrown the ball all year. They try, you know, moving to a tight end. Um, had that play with the Quinn Allen where he ran up the middle, you know, the seam of the field, and uh, you know he would have put a little bit of air on that, and that would have been a touchdown. So, again, um, my biggest thing is that's the first week we've really seen that, and there's a lot of wrinkles that, that you can kind of play off of that, you know. Um, so it's really, really going to be interesting. I do think that making that decision to go that route, especially considering your last three opponents and their defensive statistics, um, it gives us an option to really, really actually um, do something different. I mean, we saw last week, but I think there's going to be even more this week on top of that. All right, well. I mean, you, if that you, makes sense. You won so, last I mean, week because I picked Pitt to win. Because I was in my sads. Oh, God. I, I got a couple more. Oh, okay. All right. Well, go ahead. Give them to me. I just want to uh, give them. I mean, Zach, our boy Zach. Oh, um, yeah. We're, Facebook, uh, yeah. Okay. That's my guy right there. Yep. Yeah. So um, I'm actually, uh, oh, I'm actually extremely excited for this game. There's so much of the mundane spread offenses. It feels like a breath of fresh air going back to a power run game. I feel that so many defenses are tailored to ladder scheme. To t- <laughs> are tailored to the latter scheme, and we may have broken a ceiling of something that could possibly bene- benefit us for more into the future. I think Dino lets the chains off Beck, and we keep building SU35 Tech 28. Um, Nadal is with us, by the way. Legit, legit vanquished. Le- legit vanquish is his Twitter handle. He wanted to let us okay. know that. He has rebirthed his Twitter after seven years, and he is here. He's with us. He's in the spaces. Uh, I like it. And he's also on the Twitter. 
a a final score prediction, Nadal, would be amazing. It would. Um, oh boy, we have a request. Hang tight, Tom. Uh, let's see. At D Cags in the Twitter spaces, thirty-five seventeen Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is currently playing better. They will be ready for this Wildcat offense. I might be giving Q's too much credit. Well, I will say this: they, they, they would rather see a healthy Schrader throwing the ball, quite possibly. Yeah, I mean that's obvious. <laughs> so. If they wouldn't, then that's this is what we this is how we start the season, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, that's just. I just. I, I mean, look. I um last week. I'm on record saying, you know, I don't think Syracuse beats Georgia Tech, but, you know, they're going to get that Wake Forest game. We're still going to get a bowl game, blah, 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 right? That tides have turned for me. That uh, everything is fluid, though, right? Because it's yeah. like right now, right? Like what's going on right now, right? Right. Like especially like you like you look at our boy Andy who kind of called me out a little bit, you know, about you know, we just still take Schrader over Dungy, right? And you know, I always use, you know, he gives us some, some meat and potatoes here, so I always use him for the last comment. But, you know, two possibilities here. Syracuse tries doing the same thing last week, and Georgia Tech loads the box and shuts down Garrett and Dan easily, 24-7 mm. Tech. That's true. Right? I mean, you can. you can. It, I mean, that's what they will do. Right. Or Dino and the coaching staff, again, makes adjustments and adds a new niche involving the wide receivers who will more than likely be alone on the edges, creating screens, end arounds, trick plays, and defense plays good, of course. Syracuse would win 27-24. Hard to fire a coach who goes seven and five and makes a bowl. Easy to fire a coach who goes six and six and goes backwards. Yeah. Well, tell you what, if they win this game, it's kind of a statement. I mean, I think um you know it's a little bit of redemption. You gotta give them that. You know what I mean? For yep. everything that that they're doing, the adversity that they're having to overcome at this point in the season, not even really having a quarterback. That can. That, well, I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. Not having someone that can throw the ball. I mean, to be able to overcome that, if you can overcome that in the last three games and even win two out of three, but if you go three and three, that's kind Dude, of. Dude, I'm almost kind of there amazing. with my. I'm almost there with my Giants. It's like take Devito out and just let Saquon run the damn wild. What's wrong with Devito? It can't get any worse. He didn't get sacked six times. He got last sacked game. six times. <laughs> oh, he did get sacked six times. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> just playing with you. It's like fantasy. Whatever defense is playing the Giants Can't right even now. Deal. I'm a Jackson Jaguar. I'm a Jacksonville Jaguars fan for the rest of the year, by the way. I just want to let you know that. I'm a Josh just, Allen uh, fan. I've, Why is Josh Allen failing me so bad? See what happens when I glom on to things. Lost his, uh, he lost his offensive coordinator, dude. I'm just saying. Like You see what happens when I, said, I glom on to things? I, I it, told it, my, it becomes bad. I told my close group if Tommy DeVito ever – Started a game for the Giants, then I would disown that Giants team for that year. And he's starting again. So, why don't they go into the portal? Let's go to Jacksonville. Jack the, and I do. I'm, I didn't misspeak. I'm saying go into the portal. You know what I'm saying, bro? I I couldn't. I I'm don't even. Playing. I mean, I would. Take, I am just kidding. I mean, look, is Adam Sandler available? Who's the, who, who's the guy on Mr. Deeds that Adam Sandler punched? The Jets quarterback. Oh. Let's get him. I don't even care. Adam Sandler, he played a quarterback in a movie. I'll take it. Keanu Reeves. No, he played a running back. I'll take it. He played a running back. You talking about Waterboy? No, I'm talking about um, the one where they go to jail. Oh, not the replacements, but uh, I know what you're talking about. Any given Sunday? Is that what it is? No. Which one was it? I know which one you're talking about. You know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. He goes when to you jail. Say, when you Chris say Rock Adam Sandler it. football, though, it's 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 Bobby Boucher. Well, okay, right that's true. Okay, okay, fine. Keanu Reeves in the replacement. I'll take Uncle Rico. Oh, Uncle Rico point. can throw, bro. He's got an arm. That's true. He threw over the mountains. Yeah, my lips are real bad. If they would put him in, they would have won states. So, I, they, but they never did. You know, or yeah. you know, Al Bundy. You know, Paul Kai, no. bro. He was a running back, but I'm sure he's he's done a few trick plays in his day, you know. Can Terry Bradshaw still throw? I'll take that guy. Phil Robertson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at Oil Cues thirty, or excuse me, twenty seven thirty two. Blah blah blah. 
Um, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay? I think it's time, Joe. You won the longest yard, Patrick. The longest yard. There Patrick. you go. Yeah. Good job. Um, see, that's you, why I love the spaces, by the way. Huh? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Jeez. Dominic, North Carolina. Speak now or forever hold yourself. What's up, buddies? What's going on? What's going on, buddy? Heard you. I saw you razzling. Razzling. What, why does some weird happen every time? Jeez. What? I, I, I saw you ca- causing causing about. Twitter drama this week, by the way. What's up with that? Why did oh, you get- yeah. I, I was trolling a lot of buttholes. So should, can, I, can I say that on Twitter speak? I don't well, know. Apparently you and Josh Black. So I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I, am I wrong? There's I, I don't know. Syracuse people, yes, that are, don't want. They just are you tapping out your pipe ball. right now? What the hell's going on? No, it's the fan in my my. Don't even get me started. <laughs> I just punched out of work. Chris seems like people are ordering stuff for Christmas early. It's my freaking birthday, and I worked over twelve hours. Bro, we year. always order stuff early. Period. Happy you know. birthday, and, Dom. Thank you. Thank you. It's your You're birthday welcome. today. Yes, 48. Happy birthday, buddy. My birthday Thank was you, yesterday. Guys, happy birthday. Thank Very you. Nice. Oh, Sean, I didn't know. Happy birthday. Yeah, I remember wishing you happy birthday on March 8th this year, Joe. God, I'm awful with you that. You are. You're a terrible fucking friend. <laughs> Sorry. Is, do, we, do I even call him that, Dom? Do I even? You guys are best. You guys are tight. Try, like, seriously. About as tight well, as a if, tick if, on a donkey's ass. Well, if you guys weren't good friends, I, I couldn't imagine... You traveling all that way to go to a Syracuse game and hang out with someone you it, don't like, even when we argue on on the on the show. Well, because you're he's he's like your man wife, I guess. I don't know. He's just a frustrating <sighs> fucking person. Um, all right, Where's Dom. my ring, <laughs> Dom? <laughs> let's get after it. What do you got? What do you got to all say? Right. Here we go. Twenty four, twenty three. Syracuse wins because Georgia Tech mm. misses on a two point conversion and win the. To, and, to win the game instead of tying on, a, on an extra point. I like that. I like that a lot. Because you, they know they're, they're, they're not beating Georgia, so they have to go for two to get to a ball. Nice. Um, okay. All right. Well, hey, like, listening to West yeah. Durham today, he, that Georgia Tech coach is fired oh. up because people are asking him questions about... We like, opened up the floodgates, Joe. Do. I'm just so. kidding, Dom. What did you say? Did you guys go no, yeah. already? Huh? Did you guys go through the Georgia Tech's co- coach's press conference? Now nah, Joe does uh, the opposing coach press conference stuff. He was a little perturbed about people asking him, what do you think Syracuse is going to do? And he's like, yeah. oh, I don't know. They, if they were able to do what they did against Pitt in a week, who knows what they could do against us in a week. <laughs> I mean, well. He sh- it's a true statement. <laughs> yeah, it, It's true. I mean, he should be worried. Because that's his, yeah. that's the weakness in his team. So well, uh, right. The, well, and here's the other weakness: their quarterback, I believe, leads the country in interceptions. They're, he's tied with the most interceptions with somebody with, else with like 14? fourteen. Yes, fourteen. That's the most in the country. A lot, dude. Yeah, fourteen's a lot. I mean, I know it's, like, it's a lot. I know it's a lot. But is that that's the highest yeah. though in the country? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And wow, if, that's if anything, kind of hard to believe. If if and I don't know how many Buffalo people are on here that, that are going to listen, so I know this may cause some flashbacks and some aneurysms. But Super Bowl twenty five, Bill Parcells oh. won that Super Bowl by oh, keeping the ball away from Buffalo. And if Syracuse seven. can do that, if Syracuse can keep the ball away from Georgia Tech and and get at least one pick, I believe we we win this game twenty four twenty three. Yeah, that was that was the Scott Norwide though. That's why they lost that game. <laughs> by the way. That was part of it. That it was, was the that was the main part of that game. Oh, they could have won the game if he hit a thirty six yard field goal. It was forty seven. We don't keep the it. Was ball 47, out of their was games. It was forty seven. Was it really? Yeah, it was forty seven. Yeah. Okay, All right. on grass. And if and they were saying they were talking about how he that like that his longest on grass was forty eight. I, 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 hey, he fan. buckled, man. Was, he buckled. I was I was so upset. That was their was shot. Yes. I like so jealous that the Giants won that. Jealous. I'm like, uh, legitimately jealous. I'm still a huge Josh Allen fan. I love him. That and, Super and if, Bowl is what if, made me a Giants fan, by the way. Uh, it's my brother too. You guys are so queer. That's so queer. So here, here's. I was like seventy. Were years you guys old, that young? Dick. Yes. <laughs> and my dad was a Giants fan too. So. So here, here's the thing, and I gotta get another speaker on. What the hell was I gonna say? 
No, oh, if man. Josh Allen wins me a fantasy championship, I'm wearing the player tee. That's what I'm doing. So I don't do jerseys, but I'll do a player tee. I'm just saying. I'm in first place right now, and uh, you know it feels good to be on top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dom, okay. any any final thoughts? No, I'm going to run, guys, so you, you go home and get my cake, because I'm sure my wife is... Oh, the heck I- yes. Happy birthday. By the way, hey, I got creme, eating, I got creme, homemade creme brulee last night for my wife because she knows I hate cake. So that's oh. that's how awesome my wife is. I, I don't mind cake. My favorite thing for my birthday is Carvel ice cream cake. Get the crumblies, and that's my favorite. I hear so, you. Mm. I yep. hear you. You're the man, Dom. I appreciate All right, you. All right. All right. Happy birthday. Have a good night, man. You old uh, fart. Happy birthday, buddy. Creme right, brulee is got- gross. All right, buddy. Bye. Excuse you? Nah. Would you say creme brulee is gross? Yeah. You're an idiot. Not a, not a fan, dude. You're an idiot. Um, all right. Let's Sorry. go. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Um, we can take one more, and then we're um, out of here. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We're going to take one more here. Nadal. At un- unmute or forever hold yourself, buddy. What hey, you what's going on, guys? What's up, dude? What's up, man? Not much. Not much. I'm back. Uh, I'm back upstate. Nice. In Rochester. Basketball's back. You're back. The Rock. You got the, you got the, what the hell is that coffee called again? Oh, the Turkish coffee. Yes, the Turkish coffee. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. What you got going on, buddy? I took, um, so I'm doing my oncology fellowship in Rochester. So I took um, one of the fellows, never gone to a basketball game in his life, to that game. And he was in shock at the atmosphere, at basketball in general. Um, so it was a really good time. Pulling twenty, pulling what was it, Joe? Twenty four points. No, no. What was the um, the attendance? Nineteen something. Yeah, that's how. That's if if you when you put that into you know perspective as far as basketball games go that early in the season. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of. That's a lot of people. Yeah, everyone. Everyone there was hyped up for that game too everyone had the losses on their minds everyone was like keyed into the rebounding keyed into the fact that they were good three-point shooters and it was it was kind of hilarious to watch everyone get really 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 upset including myself yeah i mean it was bleak comeback it was bleak for a minute hey look i know i'm not a huge football guy but you're on here this is the syracuse at georgia tech final score prediction live segment are you good? So I I did I I did uh throw in my two cents there. No, you're good. I, I did see this hilarious tweet. It was like Alabama lost to Texas, Texas lost to Oklahoma. Yeah, that was Matt Sherman, et cetera, et cetera, and yeah. then Pitt lost to Syracuse. So I think we win. I think we win by at least three points. Um, George, I mean, we've probably already talked about Georgia Tech being terrible at um, the rushing defense. Yep. Um, so do we know anything else about Schrader? Like. Is there nothing at all? He can't throw, but he can do a back, backflip. That's what I. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> That's pretty much where it's at. I mean, you know, they're not going to tell us what's going on. They're going to keep that. It's his, it's obviously so we're not going to know until he pulls up and throws a forty yarder when he can. Right? It's not like, going to happen. He barely threw a fifteen yarder. I'm just saying. I know you don't know. That's the You're biggest right. thing. That's the biggest thing that helps us out in this game is you don't know. Georgia Tech doesn't know. We don't know. Nobody knows. We had no well, idea we, we that we were going to see what we saw last. We didn't. We had no idea that we were going to see what we saw last week. Right? Correct. No. And they correct. pulled that out. Correct. Like what? Falari for 158 yards? Really? That's why I called it brilliant because I didn't see that coming. I thought it was right. amazing. Yeah. And there's only so many things that you can. There's so many things you can come off N- of that and do. N- so. Nadal calling us out for the homer picks earlier in the year, though, really put things into perspective for me. I think. <laughs> by the way, so uh, you know. Yeah. I, so I mean, I I get all my football news from you guys. The only reason I watch football is because of the show. Because wow, all right, that's awesome. basketball season's not there. You guys talk about football for some reason, so might as well watch a couple <laughs> games. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks well, for that. Uh, that. I feel like I feel like the Jets fans. My cousins are Jets fans. I feel horrible for them. Um, oh, I mean, so they I did just get beat by the Raiders, so there's that, right? True. That's that's pathetic. True, very true. But and they are they even the really Eagles. a New York team? There's only one Stop real New York it. team. Stop it! And that's Stop. the Buffalo Bills. 
No, oh my <sighs> God. Let's go, Buffalo. Un unbelievable. I mean, is Syracuse even a New York team if they play in a, a, a baseball stadium? You know what? I'm I'm telling. I'm, well, I'm telling you, Syracuse needs to pull the top off that dome if they want to do something bigger in in football. You know, you want to be, you want to have an advantage. It's the freaking no, do you know how much shitty money weather we there. Spent on that damn new roof. I know. That's why I think it's dumb. Although I did get pieces of the roof, which is cool. The old roof. Yeah. The old roof. Yeah. How much did you pay for that? Um, not much, honestly. I got Joe one for Christmas. <laughs> they weren't much. I Appreciate got a deal, it, buddy. I got a deal on them. <laughs> they, I think I honestly think there was like sixty bucks for 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 two pieces, like uh, four, twelve by fourteen piece or something like that. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. They printed S's on them and put the dates. Um, authentic piece of the Carrier Dome roof, nineteen eighty and nineteen twenty or eight, nineteen. 1980 to 2020. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're football guys, so we talk about it, but we also understand that basketball's kind of, you know. Y you They've ruled the roost for the past, you know, however many decades. Well, so. you may or may not be surprised that each each re sport in their own res in their own respect has got different fan base that even we see. Like in the comments and just in the spaces now or wherever we go live, but we have our football crew. We have the, 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 the good chunk of people who do both, but, um, you know, we have a football crew and a basketball crew as far as, you know, social media and stuff goes. You can definitely see a big difference when it, when it changes. So, um, and I can I respect mean, that's, that. That's fair. that's fair. I mean, at yeah. least kind of get the whole year going. Exactly. Almost. Um, and we appreciate you crossing crossing that threshold yes. as well, Nadal. You know, I mean, and giving us credit for it. You know, it, yeah. it, I didn't think we were that interesting <laughs> to even come close to giving anybody incentive to watch any anything about what no, we say. No, it was funny though because it was like because you could tell he listened because he sent a comment and he was like, "Dude, I just listened to your <laughs> to your whole like preview and well, you, you guys still picked them to win. Like, what are you doing? Well, he said you guys it just admitted that your team doesn't have an offensive identity, <laughs> but yet you guys both pick them to win and they go out yeah. and lose 38 to 7 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, and I, I was mean, like, was... okay, touche, Nadal. Touche. <laughs> I mean, you guys were angry. You guys were like upset. I was about to send you guys some antidepressants and uh, some anxiety I'm, medication. I was the anger one. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's just like what kind of whatever with that. I was like, over it. Well, I almost quit. Um, we almost packed this shit up and said f it. <laughs> you almost did. <laughs> like, um, and if you do, I'm like, well, all right. I would. Well, just, that's why we're here. That's why like, we're here. Exactly. But I got to ask you, yeah. with the wealth of knowledge that we've given you, what is your final score prediction for Syracuse at Georgia Tech this weekend? Uh, I think I put 20... Oh, did you put a comment in? Okay. Yeah. yeah, he did. I was on Facebook. It was on Facebook. Oh, it was. Oh, uh, that's right. I think I had us winning by three. Um, I'm going to say just... it was 24-21. 24-21. Oh, uh, that's not actually... A, that's actually not bad at all. Really. It's pretty good. And I will throw in that I did get converted to an Eagles... My wife's family is all Eagles fans, so I did get converted... That's From a Giants bad. fan. Oh, oh, fan. Joe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Joe. Well, that's easy with the veto <laughs> the past couple of weeks. Come on. I mean, that guy. Two yeah. years ago, I would have bet my 401k this guy would have never started an NFL quarterback. And you'd have no retirement. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't make us exactly look good, does he? Like, that no. ass there doesn't look good. <laughs> No, I mean, let's be oh. honest and give him a little bit of, give him a little bit of an out here. The offensive line is just not good. The 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 Giants have more problems than quarterback. He should That's be used to it from Syracuse, no? He but he should, which is why he didn't play much there, because he wasn't that mobile. he wasn't mobile enough. I mean, I remember the one game he came in and beat Schrader beat him out. Yeah, I remember the one game he came in and beat UNC after Dungey went down, but they had a good quarterback, there or wasn't a good a... offensive line, and they had good receivers. Right, 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 right. Who was that good, uh, that that rookie quarterback that just came in as a third string and is, like, destroying everybody? <clears throat> For, because there's a couple of them. You're talking, are you talking about the are you talking about? Are you talking about NFL? Not the Titans. CJ yeah, Stroud? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, did we expect that to happen? Uh, no, Ooh. big name, though. CJ Stroud, right? I mean, he was like the number two pick. 
Yeah, I mean, he was a big name for Houston. But but yeah. he he he's got the rookie record for passing yards and all kinds oh, yeah. of crazy stuff. And he's coming. Yeah. He Car- Carolina to- fans are going crazy right now. <laughs> no, because they could have <laughs> had they- him. No, they took Bryce Young over him. Oh yeah. So, um, well, all right, Nadal. We appreciate right, you playing, on, guys. Yeah, man. So don't be a is stranger. Is there going to be a basketball episode? Oh, absolutely. Sunday. Yes, Sunday oh, we're okay, going to okay. do a Tennessee preview and do our first real preview of the year. But Man, how do, how do we have that kind of win against Colgate? It doesn't deserve an episode. Oh, the front the front end of this is all Colgate, buddy. It just was not oh, live. Okay, okay. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. It just was not live. We saved that, so you have to go download it now. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Sean's fair idea. Enough. <laughs> we were going to put no, it at the tail end, fair. but you know, with all the people that download the show, and you know, we get eight to ten in spaces we figured well let's give them let's give them something to to download you know what i'm saying so fair, fair. um anyways it is it's on the front end we started with it and i don't have an official montage yet for coach red but we did hear his opening statement which was really all you need to hear and uh we we talk about it because that was a great game and it was exciting as hell to watch and um you got to be not only just happy, but proud of the team for the fight that they had. And, you know, 1,000, 1, 1,000%. Not, I, not giving up, you know. My voice was so bad today, so scratchy that I had to, like, take off because I thought I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Dog, I did, screamed too there, much yesterday. Was there people there that left at, at halftime? Ah, uh, left at halftime. I mean, I heard because I heard mm. booing in the first half, right? And then I saw the <sighs> halftime score, and I'm like, okay, like I was nervous about what like the fans there were gonna do. So that's that's so funny. I, you know, like the boo started, and it was like kind of contagious. <laughs> I will have to say. So you joined um, in. I, that's what you're saying. Uh, no, I'm not gonna admit or deny anything. But my buddy <laughs> asked me. <laughs> My buddy asked me, he's like, why are we booing? And I was like, because we're shitty people. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's okay. Look, I, I was watching, but I was casually watching. They were it, playing like crap. As I opened my birthday presents, yeah. I was casually watching. And I, I said, mean, it was, I, yeah. At one point, I said, you know what? They might actually pull this off. And for, not for anything, they did. So. It was amazing. It was great. It was fun to watch. And um, it was, you know, it just shows, you know, what, what maybe the difference is this year. No, there's, there's definitely a lot of strengths this year. I was kind of shocked that – I was kind of shocked how bad we started. Like, I don't think we got a rebound until the seventh minute. <laughs> and there was a big fat zero next to our rebound column, and they had like seven. And we had zero. Yeah, they came out. On, it's another slow start. It's not something that we're not used to, right? <laughs> it's just football. I mean, it's, it's 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 traditionally known for being slow starts in basketball, too. I mean, just the past few years, it's, they just don't come out with a, ton, with a ton of energy most of the time. They save it for the second half. I think this year is going to have a different problem. I think they're, we're just going to have like a lull. And every single game we've had like a 10-minute period where we just stop playing as opposed to starting out slow. Save the energy. The, yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah but, but we're deep enough to where we don't need to do that. It's true. No, exactly. Exactly. And I, I, for the first time, I saw why Bell was in the starting lineup all of last year. Say that again? For the first time, I kind of understood why Bayheim had Bell in the starting lineup for all of last year. I mean, oh, yeah. he just had a game last night. 25 points. I think he hit six threes. Um, he was the only one hitting threes. And, um, yeah, I mean, talented dude for sure. You know, stuck with Benny sometimes last year too. So, I mean, he's a little bit behind the eight ball, but we'll see what he can do too <laughs> now that he's back. And, you know... We'll see what happens there. So, I'm, I, no, I mean, you saw you saw it last night. Like, it, like he knows, it, and he even spoke when I mean, we said we said it before. Like Adrian, he said in his press conference or post game press conference that the strength is the depth. You know, and right. when he saw a player in there that he obviously they did something that he did not want them to do. 
or you know that he took them straight out. Yeah, the leases right. are short this year. The leases are short, and he even took Judah out when he was getting too emotional in some points too. So, seems to me like he's managing it pretty well. It's just figuring out your rotations and figuring out who plays well with what defense, and and, and just go from there. Yeah. Um, all right, Nadal. Well, look, basketball season's here. Don't be a stranger to the spaces. All right. I think we're going somewhere, so definitely not. Definitely not. All right. Awesome. Well, let's hope let's hope we are and hope for a successful season, and um, we will catch you later. All right? Appreciate Thanks, you coming guys. on. Happy holidays, too. Hey, you too, buddy. Absolutely. Take care, man. Have a good one, bud. Good to hear from Nadal. Good to hear from the basketball folks. Absolutely. Um, all right. Look, that's about it, folks. Look, way past my bedtime right now. Do you want to give your uh... – Yes, so we didn't even give our guesses yet. So. Oh my gosh! All right, let's make it snappy, Pappy. That's true. All right. I guess we're not going anywhere, and here we sit still. Uh, all right. So you won last week. I did uh, pit, pick Pitt to win, and that's on me. And I should have had more faith, but you know what? They lost me. So here we are, at five and five, Joe, with two regular season games left, and you're up. You're going to def- receive or defer? Receive. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this whole podcast has changed my whole. I know. I whole know. thing. I know. Me too. My like live time. Thing. Live time. Yeah. Okay. So. Judge. <laughs> huh? I'm going to go 30-28. 30-28 what? Syracuse. That's a weird freaking score, bro. Yep. I know. It's really stupid sounding, mm-hmm. actually. Sorry, bud. Okay. 30. Uh, look, I like your I like your total points better than mine. I feel like I might have went low. I can still change it though because I haven't said anything. That's absolutely right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to change it. Um, look. Things go as planned in my head right now. It's going to be very similar to Pitt, and but who am I to even try to guess? Because I've been wrong a lot this year when I try to guess how they're going to play. But I think now we know exactly how they're going to play. And ironically enough, I think that the offense has an identity. <laughs> That's it. We're looking yeah, at it. Georgia Tech has We're, one game, right, to see. <laughs> I and, know. And it happens to be against their biggest weakness, right? So, I know. It's amazing. Wow, how the stars have aligned for this one. So, does Syracuse. What it seems like. Well, we've Syracuse, been wrong before. So. We've, been, we've been wrong before, but it sounds good right now. Does it Syracuse. Super good. Does Syracuse play spoiler in this thing? I think so. And coming David's into this. Super good. Coming into this game, I had. Syracuse losing, or excuse me, coming into this this show, I had Syracuse losing this game, as I mentioned last week, and when I did live time <laughs> research <laughs> because I freaking because uh, live time research because I freaking my schedule's so packed I got no time to to really get in depth on the research end of things and as I did it live time here I was like hmm, uh, one of these things is not right. And it is, yeah. and it is Georgia Tech's run defense. <laughs> Dude, it's funny when you sit here. It's like you get all the comments. You get the comments like in Twitter space and everything. And you actually start looking at some stats, and you're like, "Huh, this really isn't that big of a gap as I thought." Right? Exactly. Like, it got weird real quick for me. So it super did. Uh, anyways, I think Syracuse pulls this out. I think they play spoiler this weekend and I've got 28, 24 Syracuse. Joe, what was yours again? I didn't even write it down. 30, 30, 28, 30, 28. Okay. Both very close. So a fine line to walk there as far as the spread goes, but we both got Syracuse 28, 24 for me, 30, 28 for Joe. And, uh, we'll see what happens. My faith has been reignited by, the things I see in front of me. So, you like that? It's a little Dr. Seuss for you. I mean, I like impressive. it. It's really, it's really, really impressive. I'm glad, glad that you could figure that out. Uh, um, no, I mean, it's... Today, Junior. Let's go. 
We're an it's hour just, and a half it's, into it's the, the show, right? Okay. okay oh right, my right. gosh! This I know it's know way past your time is. Time, so we'll go. We'll okay. Go. All right. Thank you, Joe. Jimbo. Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. You got to come back next time. I'm gonna get you on. I promise. Okay. But that's gonna do it for us because it's me bedtime. And that's all I got. It's all the energy I can spare tonight. I appreciate you guys so much in the spaces. Thank you to yes. everybody for uh, listening to this mess we call the overlap. I really do appreciate it. Love you all. For Joe. Yes. I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.